Hello everyone, this is Nick Deppin here. Welcome to another edition of the Deppin Media Podcast, where we go over social media and digital media marketing trends and what you should know and how some uh, things are working and little tips on how to improve maybe some things that you're trying to work on, whether it's uh, with social media strategy, social media uh, marketing, or digital marketing or website uh, design and layout. So again, thank you for joining me here. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the first podcast and uh, thank you for joining me for the second one. So we got a couple topics to cover this uh, today, so we will uh, dive right into them. So uh, a couple things that came up uh, throughout the course of the last week, um, one of which was uh, has to do with TikTok. Uh, if you've uh, followed my blog uh, uh, quite regularly, um, which by the way, you can do that uh, nicholasdetman.blogspot.com. Please be uh, subscribed to that and you get daily updates on the latest social media uh, mar- and marketing trends as well as digital marketing and uh, SEO and website design. So again, nicholasdetman.blogspot.com. So be sure to subscribe. So a couple things that I got uh, got out this week. Uh, the first one has to do with uh, TikTok. And again, if you uh, follow the blog, uh, one of the things that uh, I've uh, definitely harped on over these last uh, several weeks is just the the growth that TikTok uh, continues to see. And uh, it was I participated in a webinar uh, last week, and it was noted that TikTok had 318 million app downloads in the first quarter of 2020 which is a record for any social media app. So just to showcase uh, how popular that app is getting, and it's certainly one that needs to garner your attention. Now that will obviously need to do some research on whether TikTok is for you. Uh, TikTok tends to lean more toward the um, Gen Z crowd, the younger crowd, the teens and uh, young college students, but that also doesn't mean that uh, adults are not jumping onto it as well as more um, companies and organizations. So it's um, the point is, is TikTok is certainly an app that you may want to pay attention to. Uh, as the returns though, as far as what it means on a, from a marketing strategy, are still kind of remain to be unseen, but it's certainly worth, like I said, uh, worth investigating. So uh, according to Social Media Today, uh, TikTok has recently launched a what's called a creator portal platform in order to provide additional guidance and tips to help creators maximize their in-app presence. And you can read that full article on my blog. And essentially what the portal is going to do is uh, it's going to give you presentations on a couple key areas on how to maximize uh, TikTok's use for what you may be trying to accomplish and even help you figure out if that is um, something you want to explore, is the use of TikTok. So... Uh, so the creator portal will cover six key areas. Uh, the first will be getting started on TikTok. So how do you get set up? Uh, next is TikTok creation essentials. Next is foundations for success. TikTok content strategy, the community guidelines in safety. That's an important one because TikTok has recently uh, altered some of its community guidelines in safety in attempts to protect some of its younger users, which are younger than 16 years old and even as young as 12. So certainly an uh, important one to keep in mind. And then also how to get paid to create. Uh, so there's a, a lot of very valuable tools that TikTok is putting out there as it recognizes the booming growth that the app has here in the United States, despite the back and forth on whether it's a, a, a viable um, app or should be banned here in the U.S., um, this is just my opinion here. I'm guessing that since uh, pr- Trump is no longer the president, um, that TikTok may have a better future. As uh, it was certainly reported toward the end of last year that t- uh, that um, then President Trump was looking to ban the app um, available here in the United States. So, uh, but since we've got a change in the um, administration, uh, so far there hasn't been any discussions or stories about. Um, TikTok's future here. So um, until then, it's again worth noting and uh, doing the research to find out if TikTok is something that works for you. So uh, the next uh, topic I'd certainly like to cover here today is uh, talking about search engine optimization and how it can best suit you and and how and get you, more importantly, how to get your business out in front of people on the World Wide Web. Uh, according to SEOTribunal.com, Google handles 3.8 million searches per minute on average around the world. 
and that comes out to 228 million searches per hour, 5.6 billion searches per day, or 2 trillion searches per year. In addition, according to Statista.com, ever since the introduction of Google Search in 1997, the worldwide market share of all search engines has been rather lopsided, meaning Google has dominated the search engine market, maintaining nearly an 88% market share as of July of 2020. If it's even gotten to the point, as I'm sure we've all said it, you know, why don't you just Google it? I mean, Google as a company is now a, a verb. Just to give you an idea of how important Google is in helping marketers, and specifically web designers, uh, reach an audience through their website and try to get their website in front of potential customers. So how do you get found? Well, there, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, it it's not a perfect science. But these are we these are key ways that can definitely help you, and and it's very maintainable and very easy very easy to do even on your own website. Now uh, the first is just make sure your website is up to date. Um, Google routinely does a thing called crawling, so it checks websites for functionality, it looks for keywords on your website, and I'll get on that here in a little bit, and it helps Google identify what your website is about, what your brand, and what your company or your organization is all about. And it does that through websites, um, searches, and, and Google is a great resource tool to do that with Google Analytics, and it's a free tool. Um, but also keeping sure that your website is up to date, making sure you have words on your site that are important, and just, make, again, making sure just your site is up to date. And then, uh, next one is like I mentioned just previously is make sure you're, you have keywords on your website that define what your brand does or offers. Now essentially what that means is to say if you're looking to sell um, snowblowers here in the Midwest or uh, lawnmowers elsewhere or you're looking for a new car or if you're a landscaping business is another example. Be sure you have those kinds of words on your website. Again, really you kind of think of it as you're trying to lead the, the horse by the rein. You want you want to grab the brain and lead people to your website. And how do you do that is by making sure you have the key elements that what your business and what your company or organization is all about and what you want people to do once they go to your website. Um, this is another one, especially with the digital age, and um, this is another blog topic that I will touch on uh, at a different time, is have a mobile-friendly website. Right now, mobile is dominating what we do. Despite the fact that most of us are staying at home, Mobile still has a very, very strong presence and a very strong active use. Uh, so making sure your website is mobile friendly is very important. Now I've given presentations about uh, user experience on a website. And user experience really can drive a person to whether they want to commit to a company or not. If the site does not work for the, what they feel they need it to, then it's a good chance those people are not going to come back to your site. So having a mobile-friendly site is very important. And kind of spinning off of that is have a website with a strong speed. You don't want to have too much stuff on your website that can slow your loading speed uh, for people trying to get to your website. Again, it goes back to user experience. And if you create a, a negative user experience, you will turn off that consumer and you likely have lost them. So big things there from search engine uh, optimization on Google and just things to think about when you're structuring your website um, and how you can help get your brand and your name in front of people who are trying to find your website. So again, just lead them in. And that, those are some key tips that I've found and others and throughout the industry have found that help. Uh, next topic I want to cover real quick too is has to do with um, dealing with crises on social media. Um, Obviously, on social media, the, we work as almost like a public relations manager, but your work is kind of in the public's eye. Um, having an, a, uh, a crisis strategy um, for things is extremely important. And a great example of that was what happened in Minneapolis last year after the death of George Floyd. What messaging should go out? What happens if users attack your brand on social media, which we saw quite a bit in terms of how some companies responded to um, their handling of the George Floyd and the um, unrest, the riots, whichever you want to call it, um, that followed it. And it's a very scary place to be when you don't have that strategy. But like anything else, having a strategy can make life a lot easier. It's not going to be perfect. You're still going to have people that are going to be upset. 
but being true to what you are as a brand is certainly one of the best ways to do that. Um, in my experience and for what I've done in terms of research, transparency is the easiest method to do it. It may be tough on you at the beginning. You might get some feedback, but in the long run, I found people through experience that being open and honest up front will go a lot longer um, with people. Uh, and you can say that for just about anything, but certainly when you have a crisis on your social media, um, if people are trolling you or bashing you for something you said or did related to a, specific, a highly controversial event, um, being transparent is the best way to do it. And stay true to your word and, and, and to who you are as a brand. And that leads into the next part is understand your audience and what your brain is about. It's just as do something because you think you have to do it or it's what everybody else is doing. What somebody else may be doing may not be the best method or tactic for you. So that's certainly something that's very, very important. And then coming up to, uh, you may have already started to see this um, on your Facebook business pages, is uh, Facebook is... Uh, filtering out the our story section when it comes to profiles of Facebook um, business pages and really what they're doing is they're just taking out that element and adding it to your about section so uh, if you haven't updated your about or your our story section maybe you just make sure you have that stuff uh, up to date because of the changes that Facebook is making um, because Facebook uh, really works in a lot of ways like Google in terms of searching now, if people put in keywords and searches on Facebook, if you don't have those keywords on your Facebook page, specifically in your About Us section, then it might be a little harder for uh, users to even just find your social media page. So just a little tip to be on the lookout and make sure your Our Story uh, section is up to date. So uh, that just about wraps up today's uh, podcast. Uh, I do want to give a little teaser up for next week or from the next podcast. Um, Facebook has just kind of revealed um, some tips on how to predict or how it predicts uh, what users want in their um, their Facebook feed. So this is really kind of a this is really kind of a surprising move in a sense by Facebook, I think, that they're letting you in to find out really kind of how they think. Um, so this is a great opportunity to learn more about that. I'll have a blog out about it um, later, but then we'll also talk about it um, on the next podcast. So. That will do it for today. Uh, again, thank you so much for listening to my podcast. Um, hopefully you've given it a chance to listen to my other episode where we talked about some of the big changes that YouTube made, which are still quite exciting. Uh, and uh, hopefully you've subscribed to my blog. Again, that's nicholasdetman.blogspot.com. Or follow me on Twitter, and that's Nick, N-I-C-K, underscore Detman, D-E-T-T-M-A-N-N. And you'll get updates uh, there as well. So... Until next time, thanks so much for listening and uh, stay safe and we'll talk to you again.